Good day everyone! I am Jensen Ramos Abajo, your presenter for this topic. For today's presentation, we are going to learn about the Beat Generation. What was the Beat Generation? Let us watch this video and have a gist of what was Beat Generation all about. Alright, so after watching the short video, what have you noticed? Please pause this video and share your thoughts. Thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts. Well, at the end of this lesson, you are able to identify what was the Beat Generation, the Beat Literature, the Founders, and their influences. So without further ado, let's get started. So, what was the Beat Generation? The Beat Generation was a literary movement started by a group of authors whose work explored and influenced American culture and politics in the post-war era. The bulk of their work was published and popularized throughout the 1950s. The Beat Generation was a smaller literary movement in the 1950s that helped big changes in both the literary world and pop culture, though generally considered separate from postmodernism. The Beats, as they were called, shared many commonalities with postmodern writers. The years immediately after the Second World War saw a wholesale reappraisal of the conventional structures of society. Just as the post-war economic boom was taking hold, students and universities were beginning to question the rampant materialism of their society. The Beat Generation was the product of this questioning. They saw a runaway capitalism as destructive to the human spirit and antithetical to societal equality. In addition with their dis dissatisfaction with consumer culture, debates rallied against the stifling prudery of their parents' generations. The taboos against frank discussions of sexuality were seen as unhealthy and possibly damaging the psyche. Instead, they experimented the alternate sex qualities, drugs in Eastern religious beliefs such as Zen Buddhism. In the world of literature and art, the Beat stood in opposition to the clean formalism of the early 20th century modernists. They fashioned a literature that was more bold, straightforward, and expressive than anything that had come before. Underground music styles like jazz were especially evocative for Beat writers, while threatening and sinister to establishment. To many, the artistic production of the Beats crossed the line into pornography and therefore merited censorship. Some dismissed the Beat generation's literature as mere provocation, a means to get attention not serious one. Time has proven that the cultural impact of the beat writers was far from short-lived, and the influence of their work continues to be widespread. The founders of the beat generation met at Columbia University in the early 1940s. Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg formed the core of this initial group. Other big names like Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Neil Cassidy, Lucien Carr, Carl Solomon, and William Burroughs. Despite their anti-establishment presentations, they were all well-educated and generally from middle-class backgrounds. It was Kerouac who coined the term Beat Generation in the name stock. The artistic production of the American modernist was in many ways reviled by the Beats. The neoclassical formalism of T.S. Eliot was rejected as too much removed from the real-life experience. Eliot embraced his status as an academic while to the beat generation, he was simply one more elitist with presentations and pretensions of grandeur. Instead, the beats were inspired by a variety of sources. Several of the originator claimed romantic poets are major influences on their work. Percy Shelley and William Blake are often cited as especially influential on the development of the Beat aesthetic. Interspersed with their romantic influences were surrealist and absurdist tendencies. At the same time with the American transcendental movement of the 19th century, which is also a power inspiration for the confrontational politics of the Beats. Who is Lawrence Ferlinghetti? The elder statesman of the Beat Generation was the poet Lawrence Ferlinghetti, a son of immigrants. 
Ferlinghetti was a Navy veteran who worked with the resistance movement during World War II. He settled in San Francisco after the war, where he opened the City Lights bookstore. City Lights quickly became a hub of B-generation intellectuals. Around the same time, Ferlinghetti also entered the publishing industry, bringing both lesser-known and established poets to the mainstream. In his own poetry, Ferlinghetti displayed a jazz-inspired rhythm and an improvisational spirit. His lines seem almost thorough on the page. Though underneath, the seeming disorganization was careful, planning in a deliberate effect. The publication of Allen Ginsberg's How in 1956 marks a turning point in the history of beat literature, not to mention American literature in general. The long-term poem is intended to be read aloud, almost chanted as sort of return to an oral tradition that had been neglected in literature for a long time. The content of the poem raised eyebrows and sparked in an obscenity trial which challenged the definition of pornography in America. Ginsburg's warn in the judgment more or less ensured that poetry and fiction would from then on be immune to the kind of censorship that still plagued other genres of art. With Howe, Ginsburg takes the reader on a tour of the underside of America. There are drug addicts, drifters, prostitutes, and swindlers. There is a visceral rage against a system that requires conformity and selling. Out foul language and slaying common throughout the work as well as drug use and criminality. All of these things were shocking to the 1950s establishment. But for Ginsburg, he was simply following the path of his inspiration. No beat generation novelist garnered more attention in adulation than Jack Kerouac. And none of their personal lives were filled with conflict, confusion, and crippling depression. Eventually dying from his alcoholism, Kerouac was never happy with the position that he attained as the de facto spokesperson for his generation. He was reportedly quite shy and had a difficult time with the rejection that he faced early in his career. His single greatest success was On the Road, a philosophical travel narrative which blends streams of consciousness, drug visions, and profound observations into a general statement that resonates to this day. The Big Sur, named after an area of wilderness in California, Big Sur was composed quickly on a roll of teletype paper. The novel draws from Kerouac's solitary stay in Ferlinghetti's isolated cabin in Bixby Canyon. It's formed as what the author called spontaneous prose equivalent to jazz improvisation and its emphasis on rhythms and inflections. Finally, born to a wealthy family in St. Louis, Missouri, William Burroughs was turned down by the Navy to serve in World War II and instead became a drug addict. One night, Burroughs accidentally shot his first wife, Joan Bulmer, in the head, supposedly during a drunken attempt at playing William Tell. The near savagery of his life would naturally carry over into his artistic effort. His greatest contribution to literary technique was what they called the cut-up, a form which the text is cut up and rearranged. The blatant disregard for narrative effectively mirrored Burroughs' mental state as he forever struggled with alcohol and drug addictions. The scenes in his most famous novel, Naked Lunch, are drawn from his experiences as a heroin addict as he lived throughout Mexico City, London, Paris, and Tangier in Morocco among other places. Much of the material from his novel came from the letters to Ginsburg and Kerouac along with other fragments of writings which were all eventually integrated together. The Beat Generation made a lasting impact on the structure of modern American society. With Ginsburg's Howl, the notion of what was acceptable literature was broadened immensely. Censorship as the force for modulating public discourse in the realm of literature at least 
came to an end. Modern poetry underwent a relaxation of structure and style that basically allowed for anyone to express themselves in whatever fashion they chose. Experimentation became an expectation as the stuffy formalism of the modern was wholly subverted. By about 1960, the beat movement had begun to fade. There, its experiments with form and its social engagement continued and had lasting effects. The movement produced a number of significant writers including Ferling Getty, Gregory Carso, Philip Whelan, and Gary Snyder. The poet Leroy Jones had also been part of the Beat Circle and published their work in his magazine Yukon. Though he broke with the movement in the 1960s, the Beats paved the way for broader acceptance of the other unorthodox and previously ignored writers such as the Black Mountain Poets and the novelist William S. Burroughs. So there, that ends my report. I hope you learned something about this presentation. And once again, I am Jensen Ramos Sabajo of English2B. Have a wonderful day.